<clears throat> YouTube. Hey guys, how you doing? Chris Rod. Today I'm here on a lawn, one of our clients. And as you guys can see, hopefully I can get some without being too blurry. Oh, look at that brown. <laughs> All right, what you're looking at is some turf type tall fescue and there's some Bermuda in here. What you see in the back over here, that browning right there, um, a, a good majority of that is actually some weeds that we had spread out. Let me get the tree out of the way. A good majority of that in that back corner over here are a lot of broadleaf weeds that we sprayed out earlier this year. Um, and then also the Bermuda grass. We treat Bermuda inside of our turf type flower. Our, our fescue, our northern grass type lawns, we treat uh, Bermuda grass with Pilex, okay? Some of that is the remnants of that Bermuda dying um, from last year, actually, because we haven't sprayed it yet. But when you are preparing to kill some Bermuda inside of a fescue lawn, you typically have to do about three applications. You do that going into fall time before your overseeding process. It's gotta be done before the overseeding process. So this lawn has been a transition. This used to be 100% Bermuda. And uh, where you guys see that, that, that uh, mulch bed there, that circular brick pattern there, there used to be a massive tree, very similar to the ones right above me here and here. So it was all shade back here. So we, we turned it into a fescue a fescue backyard and then the tree was cut down because it was surviving it was dying back and so the homeowner had it removed so now that part that part of the yard that fescue part gets 100 percent sunlight west texas heat we're at 110 yesterday i think we're getting better like 105 today but uh it's just getting smoked okay so that's kind of what the video is about is how to maintain cool season grass types in the summer heat. If you watched my video yesterday, I posted one about how to maintain Bermuda lawns in the summer heat. Man, look at that. And you got some green back there. You got a lot of green and it's all shaded right here. I mean, it's, of course, we got Fido digging, there, digging her thing. <laughs> it's the escape artist of the house. So anyways, and as you guys can see, a lot of green underneath these trees. So what we're dealing with essentially are two things okay and sometimes it's possibly three things this time of the year again remember uh, pest issues disease issues and of course your heat stress which is what we're experiencing back here we've got some needling a lot of needling and let me just give you an example of what needling is it's when your your fescue lawns will start to literally um the, the leaf blade it goes from a flat blade and then it starts to curl up on itself and what it's doing is it's literally protecting itself okay it's not dying okay it literally will needle up and it goes into dormancy it's protecting itself okay so if you do have a fescue lawn don't think that your fescue is necessarily dying okay it's no shade here it's just protecting itself it's going into dormancy however we still need to maintain this lawn, okay? Because there is some Bermuda that we're trying to get rid of. We still got a lot of healthy uh, fescue grass intermittent under the shades. So we still got to do certain applications. And one of those applications this time of the year going into this heat is, oh man, I know, I know. Don't hate on me. It's time to sharpen them blades. That is, that's nasty, that's bad. I don't know if you got, look at that choppiness. All right, so that it happens. We gotta sharpen the blades. But what I do wanna point out are those lesions. You see those brown specks on the, gr the grass blades? That's fungal and disease issue, guys. When you start to see gray leaf spot or you got some lesions on your grass blades, that's when you know, um, if you haven't already, it's time to get down a fungicide application. We are approaching our monsoon season here in West Texas. Uh, that's in the back end of July. So get proactive about it. July 1st is right around the corner. And in 28 days, we start getting some random rain. As a matter of fact, next week, our forecast has a little bit of rainfall. So we got to start protecting the lawn. So we're going to get down to fungicide application. That's really, besides your pest control, um, a necessary application. And then moreover, you continue to feed your lawn during the summertime. We're still going to push growth, not a massive amount of growth, but we're still going to maintain those nutrient levels inside of the soil system. So I've got my push spreader back there. We're gonna be doing a spoon feeding application. It's simply all that is, is you cut your rates in halves or you go at a quarter pound rate. So for example, um, 
if you're typically applying a half pound or three quarter pounds of nitrogen, you need to back it down to a quarter, 0.25 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet, okay? That would be my recommendation. You just give it a little bit of food, that way it can still sustain life through the summer heat. So for, you know, northern grass types, once we get out of this summertime, remember, in the summertime, or I, let me back up, in the springtime, northern grass types are thriving. It's just going up, the growth rate's going up. And then when that summer heat comes along, you get the needling effect, some of the grass dies back. And also depending on if you're irrigated or not irrigated, it's definitely gonna turn brown. And then the growth rate, that curve slows down and it goes back to like a flat line. Once we get out of this summer heat, it spikes back up and the growth rate continues back in the winter time, okay? That's how the pattern for northern grass types. So, uh, we're still gonna keep the fertilizer applications going on. We're also gonna get down to fungicide, fungicide application. I'm gonna be putting down some propiconazole. I've got a liquid form that we spray the yard. And if I'm not mistaken, depending on the type of disease you're uh, dealing with, we'll determine how many ounces per thousand square feet you're gonna be applying. Today, we got 2,000 square feet. We're gonna be applying two ounces per thousand square feet. And don't quote me on the exact um ounces per thousand but read your labels the label is always the law and it varies depending on the disease you're trying to treat so if you know if you got brown patch or you've got some sort of fairy ring um dollar spot gray leaf spot things of that nature uh, identify the the disease first then that will determine how many ounces of a fungicide you guys need to apply <laughs> Like I said earlier, there's only a couple of things that could be wrong. Irrigation, pests, or fungicide. You put down what you see, what you can help, and what you can't control. And when you look and you run something, like a system irrigation for somebody. Tell me what's wrong with this picture. And these are one of them patterns I was telling you about yesterday. Look at the sprinkler head. It stops right where that green line is. It doesn't even wet this area. Irrigation issue, guys. <laughs> Gotta fix them as you go. Really all I got for you, I went ahead and mowed it. I'm not gonna show you the applications. I just wanted to touch with base with you guys and talk to you. We still treat northern grass types here in West Texas as well. And as you can see, when they're shaded, they're thriving. But when that sun hits them, whoo, that stuff gets smoked. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you found any value out of this video, please leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that when we post the next video, you guys get updates on what kind of applications we're doing here in West Texas. Check you guys later.